Hello, hello. Kim here. We'll get ready, Raquel. Chris, thank you very much, Chris. I really appreciate that. Ah. Uh, my day was uh, pretty decent. <clears throat> yes. Kim has notified you that we are live. <clears throat> Get ready for a uh, throat clearing extravaganza. I'm still not 100% better, but much. I'm healthy inside. <clears throat> oh no. <clears throat> mm. How many we got? And then I got to do it. Actually, I'll just do it right now. Hey, recording started. It is April. It is May 13th, 2019. And we are ready to talk about what's going on. A uh, special edition today. We're going to make a Bitcoin watch list using our techniques. <coughs> we are going to talk about a lot of things. Um, so let's get started. Um, plays today really were Dark Star Ventures for one. Uh, <clears throat> congratulations on our entry around 1213. Um, on the 8K that came out. And today... Another great move, followed by some consolidation. <clears throat> also a disappointing day for me uh, professionally. Um, <clears throat> the amount of uh, broken hearts from people that slap the news on Dark Star Ventures, uh, shocked me. Shocking. I'm shocked. <clears throat> I am blown away. So blown away 
that I don't even want to look at it. Honestly, that's how that's how disappointed I am. But let's take a peek. One thing about and if you watch my video on We Trade HQ on the list, there's something called how to long, you long? It's called how to long. And that's gross, but it's important. The video is called how to long. And if you look at these stretched out plays, um, these long runners with, with real catalyst, LFAP, shrimp, different things like that, where there's actual value being created for shareholders. <clears throat> You trade it on the 30, and it has great runs on the 30. Now, for me, with my entry of 12, the probability of my selling this and getting 12 back is very low. The right strategy for me, however, would have been to sell on the cross as that was the confirmation that this was done for the time being. I think what's lost on us, though, is... Um, have you ever heard of a stop loss? A stop loss is one of those things, and look how much better the KST really is for, for getting out of things in time. Like, I mean, my goodness. But a stop loss is something that, that you would put in place. And not that I'm saying to put one in place here or in the OTC in general, but a stop loss is created in case you get into a situation where you bought it too high and you're taking hard L's. You're taking hard losses. And that cross, that downward cross on the 30, if you slapped it, you know, 28, 27, 29, if you slapped it up high today, that cross on the 30 should have been your sign that, you know what? Until this resets, there will be no relief for me. There will be no relief for me. If I were to have traded this perfectly, I would have traded it. I would have sold everything on the 30 cross and begun to reload as it began to cross back up. If I had traded it perfectly. But I am in a catbird seat situation with my average, like many y'all, um, where, you know, I guess I could go through that stress, but I'm way up and I believe this has value and therefore I don't, I don't really want to. I'm just looking for other things. <clears throat> and then to further my professional disappointment, I hear, well, obviously some dilution here. Where is that at? Where's that dilution at? Because I'm seeing buying volume to selling volume at least seven to one or more. Where's the dilution at? I'm seeing, oh, well, look at those walls. Look at those, look at those walls. Bitter waller, bitter waller, bitter, bitter waller. Like, seriously. And I was honestly, like, I was in the chat and I was just like, oh my God. Like, do I like the fact that this didn't just go to the moon? No, it's, it's not a celebratory moment for me. But literally, in a situation where something that you expect a continuation on didn't do what you wanted, all the worst habits came out. Not looking at the chart to see if there is dilution. Not looking at the buy versus sell volume. Slapping news after everyone bought the news on an 8K. Not selling on the downward 30 cross if you bought too high or if you were about even at where that 30 cross was. See, this was a resistance 18. And now it's a support. That's... That's how something works when it's beginning another leg. The resistances have now become support.
thing about and then and then you know like i mean i can't say for sure if dark star ventures will continue i can't it may absolutely shit the bed right to flat boom dunzo but here's what i will say i would personally hold it in a higher esteem than some bullshit pump right no one got to front load dark star ventures no one front loaded that 8k no one front loaded the prior announcement they didn't announce a reverse split you know like there's there doesn't seem to be any dilution to me i don't know about you but I, i'm seeing a ton of slaps and then a period of selling from people who, who might have been in as low as dub eight or lower i didn't see them sell off or them sell off very much did you But every other reason than you fucked up your trade is the reason today, right? That's it. That's what it is. I feel there's value here, and I will tell you that trades like LFAP, Everything else, it's the walls, it's the bitters, it's the MMs. They are shaking it. Must be dilution. Everything else today. And then who gets the brunt of it? Everything we put in place out the, out the window. Guess what? You got in too high in that 30 cross. You better burn it for a loss before you take a big loss. Now you're baggy. That's how trading works. Don't come at me for thoughts. I'm sorry that it didn't run as much as you want. And I personally expected it would do a bit better. But that's the name of the game. And if you are prepared for it, it is what it is. But let's look at LFAP. If I could, can I load a chart? All I saw was people like revert back to a mode of, of like before they were even in here. Look. that's that's my life now thoughts on there's your thoughts see i bought the bottom of a daily candle if you bought anywhere over 23 you bought a daily wick And there was a day, I don't know if you recall on LFAP, before the big run of Reno, where it hit 14 and the next day it hit 3. And it consolidated for a long period of time. You know, so, so what is your, because I only see buying here on the daily. I only see buying here on the 30. Yet, all the things that we do to look at plays, all I can find is Dev C done. Maybe it is done. But based on what I'm seeing with all the things we've put in place, like a reverse merger. Oh, Jesus. Like a reverse merger, like no reverse split, like value coming into a ticker. I see those things, and I also don't see a lot of selling in relation to buying. Do you? So a question like Dav C done is a lazy question. 
And part of the reason I get so worked up is I came from an environment. I became this way with, with these tools from an environment in the OTC prior to KSM where it was shut the hell up and get on bid. That was, that was my answer to my questions. So if you think DAVC is done, get out. If you held through a downwards 30 cross, that's a baggy move. Especially if you bought above where it crossed at. If you are now irritated that you don't have liquidity on Dav C because you bought above an upward 30 cross, or uh, you bought above a downward 30 cross, and now you don't have liquidity, that's on you. If you were getting activated in the chat that it ran too far and you couldn't wait an hour, and then after you wait an hour, it, it went down to exactly much, much lower than it went, maybe you forget how many times we've gone through this. Everything went out the window today. It was a, it was, it was, a, it was, it was fucking chaos. I'm exhausted. Now, here's something strange. The thing about Bitcoin tickers, well, it's, it's, you know, I mean, we have a support and resistance bot in our chat. You could type in SR and then the ticker. And if you want to talk about making support and resistances, I mean, Really, it's like I can see it right here. Well, what's the resistance? It tried 18 and failed, and it tried 18 and failed. Man, the support seems to be about dub nine, historically, about dub nine. Broke resistance at 18. created a new support at 18. So the old resistance is now the support. Now, if I'm actually choosing a time to get out, if I pick the exact moment of the support, things can test support. And that's okay. But if I'm choosing a time to really get out, it's when it's it's crushed well below the prior support. And and the way to identify that, you know, is is when you get into, you know, like these downward wicks. You know, these downward wicks are, are real anomalies, right? You know, 16. You know, if it goes below 16 again, um, it could be going really a lot lower because those are the anomalies. The support is 18 and 16. So if it starts touching 16 many times and goes below 16, I'm going to burn it. Because I don't want to be stuck when it gets dumped all the way off. Um, but ultimately, I mean, the, the KST and the MACD pretty much tell the story. And you don't want it the second it touches right on the like right here that that first moment here at 24 when it crossed easy exit 25 no you want it to to make one more full 30 minute candle under to decide and you still had a shot at 25 on that and then it tells the story so i mean it was it's a pretty simple understanding of what the support and resistances are 
I'm moving on. NDYN, Bitcoin is back. How back? Let's take a look. Seems to be really back right now, like in a big way. <clears throat> Another way you can look at support and resistances is, is where all the baggies live at. And I would argue that the baggies have not been cleared yet. The hardcore baggies live up here around 11, 12. That's where the big dump job started happening in here, 12 to 13. So I will believe, like, because because it's like, um, remember, um, oh, gosh, lease on Friday. Right, like, lease made this big run, and then it had this candle pop up, and you went, oh, lease back, should have loaded it. Well... Should you have? Because I'm seeing power on lease and then I'm seeing, you know, a few people who still are checking for lease slapping lease. Yes. <clears throat> and that kind of looks like Bitcoin for me, like people that are still checking for Bitcoin are slapping Bitcoin. But for the most part, people still really don't care that much about Bitcoin. <laughs> like if you're, if you're asking for the chart to tell you a story. <clears throat> yes? Yeah. The volume has increased though. <clears throat> and it is moving up because it was very much sold out. The thing about when Bitcoin runs is there are Bitcoin tickers. Bitcoin tickers that run in conjunction. And NDYN is a new fresh Bitcoin ticker. And if you were around for the Bitcoin craze last time, you will recall a bunch of tickers that were so red hot thanks to Bitcoin at the end of or start of 2018, my apologies, time flies. <clears throat> they were just fire, the hottest. They were too hot to handle. And then when Bitcoin died and their operations and their ant miners and ass miners or whatever they're into began becoming worthless the dilution taps turned on <clears throat> so things like mgti intv various bitcoin types of runners began getting absolutely destroyed Ass miners, you don't know them. You got to get in. You got to get into the crypto kind of kind of scene. You know, Time Fire VR, great example. You know, like these things got massacred when Bitcoin died because their their operations became worthless. It would be like a mining actual mining company, and then the world outlaws gold. <laughs> or no one cares about gold anymore. Someone's created a gold replica that's identical they can make in their kitchen sink. It's over for gold. This is what the gold stocks will look like if that were to happen. <clears throat> the good news is for NDYN, because all of the old Bitcoin stocks were so dumped into the ground, NDYN, a fresh one, reverse merger that was doing Bitcoin, was just too easy to move. And so they started slapping it, and next thing you know, it was history. But I think NDYN is a lesson, as is Falcon. Um, really in patience. Um... NDYN, you had to 
and I had a great, a really good trade on it because I was in so early. But realistically, you had to hold it for, I don't know, f four business days, four business days. And it was all oh, NDYN, NDYN, oh, NDYN, 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 NDYN. Thoughts on NDYN? Just like Falcon. What a bag. What a bag. Falcon, such a bag. Bag, bag, bag. This is such a bag at 0 0.02 when we bought it. And it ran to 0.6. And we talked each other into it being a bag, if you recall. Because it's funny, with 255 members here, a few people that bought it too high feel that they have the right to pollute the environment with their complaints. And that's exactly what happened to Falca. We all had enough. I was like, fuck Falcon. Dumped it. I don't want to hear about it again. Sometimes a good setup is always a good setup. <clears throat> and NDYN is a great example of that. And some of us did really, really well. Dav C is a great setup. A reverse merger, a real company coming in. NBA pump. Everything like that. And after a 160% move, it went down 25%, and it's done. <coughs> God bless. <clears throat> so the thing about Bitcoin tickers, though, is there are some that are too low down here. And it's our job to make a Bitcoin watch list. I don't know what it is. I hope it's done. Excuse me. I have to, I'm still a little bit sick. So we're going to make a Bitcoin watch list now. How are we going to do it? How am I going to make sure that I can get all the tickers that mention Bitcoin, mention cryptocurrency, all those different things into a list? from here <clears throat> well there's two ways to go about it first way is you could use the stock screener you could go for pink securities or QB I've got a different way that I like quite a bit and you could look at industry. And see if you found Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, something like that. Do we see cryptocurrency? No, we don't. Do we see financial? No. I don't even see fintech. <coughs> I see a bunch of companies or a bunch of categories. That are old school set up old school categories that have not brought cryptocurrency 
into it. I'll do you one better, Dwayne, but you're on, you're on it, pal. You got it. Let's go. Just like we did hemp watch list. Site. OTCmarkets.com. And. Bitcoin. Or. Fintech. Or. Cryptocurrency. Or. Ethereum. Or. Fiat. Or. The more the better. Litecoin. Or. Let's start there. <clears throat> Okie doke. We got 2,080 results. 2,500 results. That's a lot. That's maybe too much. So what I could probably do here is I could take out things that I don't want, like backend. The reason I've asked for the word backend to leave is because I only want company profiles. So right here, you could see backend which, by the way, super gross. Exactly. Thank you, Andy. My goodness. Right? That's disgusting. Um, but backend is a term in the search term that takes you straight to filings, which is a duplication of effort from looking at the company profiles, right? GBTC is here and GBTC is up there. So I'll subtract, subtractor, no space, back, uh, back end. 1,400 results now. We knocked out 1,000. I'm looking through. And I'm seeing that the ones... I want to see the profile. I don't want Edgar because that would give me filings. Give me a company profile. Ah, right here. So the URL for a profile, a company profile is otcmarkets.com slash stock. 118. So now we are at 118 tickers. Do you see what I did? I have 1300 results, but I see that anything that goes straight to a company profile has this as the URL slash stock. So I only, <clears throat> excuse me. So I only want my Boolean search to be of the website, otcmarkets.com slash stock. Not otcmarkets.com as a whole. <clears throat> So here we go, 118 results. Hmm. And there is some duplication here. And I could see that profile is really what we want. Yes? So now it must have the word profile. 119. So it's about the same. There's a way to use a wild card, but at least this keeps us out of the woods with too many duplicates or filings we don't care about. 
Let's go. GBTC, BTGN, EPOR, DIGAF, uh, no, no, DIGAF, ARSC. OTC Markets has a bit of news here. Who are they? Who are they? Who are they mentioning? F stock. I don't have to with that. Bit CF is a bag. GDSI. MGTI. Costas. Marizyme. Ah. No. So I'm getting into a situation here where I'm getting a lot of news stories. Like Dark Star Ventures, PBYA, True, GDSI. So we're getting into a situation where these things are coming into it. So my search is SIPC, BFCH, TOGA. <clears throat> EFLN, Beta Music Group, which has been on a hell of a run. Wuhan General has moved from crypto to magic mushrooms. San P in the game. Hutton in the game. CCTL in the game. Zoom Pass in the game. USTC was in the game and was the thinnest of the thin. And it may be worth a watch, but they switched to weed not long ago. Just as people stop caring about weed, Exol, Bayside. Great start. <clears throat> GBCT, also known as, well, now known as Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Before it was Global Bitcoin Trust and they got a little bit big for their britches and GBTC chart looks almost exactly like Bitcoin chart. You could trade GBTC. It, it almost mirrors Bitcoin and they believe they are the Bitcoin ETF. So if you ever wanted to trade a ticker with, where you could get a bunch of shares affordably over dealing with Bitcoin nonsense, on a managed exchange, GBTC is the ticker for you. And it really does. And GBTC, if you wanted to just buy and sell securities without having to go through Coinbase or whatever, GBTC might be really nice for you. I'd trade it on the 30 for sure. But this could be really, really nice. And it, the chart almost looks identical to Bitcoin. And I've traded GBTC before. Um, and done quite well. And it seems to be moving on pretty low volume where I'm from. Nice. That's a good look. <coughs> Bitcoin generation, BTGN, is now a uh, on the gray market. It's done. So we'll pass. Epor. They've announced that they are a non-typical cryptocurrency company. And personally, Epor is looking kind of like shit. However, in December, they had a float of 3.8 million and it's back down at 0.26 with the daily crawling out of the hole on low volume. I'm going to pass on Epor. If you're interested, it's EPOR and they had news. Hmm.
If you're interested in this news, it looks like they're trying to do something. Maybe worth a look. It it looks really painful to me. But that's up to you. D I G A F. After a great run, D I G A F came back down. Big run. Got dumped off hard. And it's kind of crawling back up on the 30. Had a bit of action today, but if I put it on the daily, we're making a Bitcoin watch list. What's good? What's hot? Um, you know, it's just a really frustrating. Yeah, do do I give an F? You know, it just, I don't think so. I don't think so. <clears throat> ARSC <clears throat> is now in the gray market. During the Bitcoin pump fiasco, a ton of tickers went to the gray market, got halted by the SEC. They had enough of Bitcoin pump. <clears throat> GDSI is a very interesting company. This is the one that has lawsuit supported by Shrimp Man, Shrimp CFO, and it was. It's been a wild ride, and it weighs. It's got to weigh a million pounds. Yeah, five hundred million on the float. Point zero one nine. It's trying to crawl up, but eh. I don't know. I'm not particularly interested in it, but they do have an upcoming lawsuit. MGTI made a couple fire runs <clears throat> um, in the past. Um, February, really nice. And you could see how hard they dilute into each one. I mean, like seriously, like it used to move up on this and literally a month and a half later, it's barely even moving. It's such a pig. I. It's moving. I get it. I I just don't want to. But that's one that's on the Bitcoin watch list. CSSI, also known as Costas, has been known to go hard. On Bitcoin. <clears throat> God bless. Cost is still only 14 million on the float and certainly crawling out of the hole on the daily. Very low volume. But this is the thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to find Bitcoin tickers that are not yet baked. Right? Like, because everyone's going for the obvious Bitcoin tickers. So we need to fit, look for things that are outside of the realm of people's Bitcoin thoughts so we could be ahead of the game because I don't want to chase. Cost us. That's something I'm going to put on my Bitcoin watch list. Personally, I can't buy it. It has a cease trade where I live, where I'm from. But cost us. Potentially look good, especially off support. I mean, even when Bitcoin was a full-blown bag, it was around here. So, you know, not bad. Cost us. Add it. Marizyme. This is funny. No. MRZM. Oh, come on. This is a reverse merger that had a uh, reverse split. But it was a long time before this. It doesn't look, it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, they've been releasing news, the share structure, 2.3 million on the float, not great. Pass. Sip C. bag 
bin a bag. What's your life worth? What's your time worth? BFCH. BFCH had news today. BFCH news out. You heard of BFCH? BFCH this, BFCH that. I get it. I totally get it. But here's the thing. You know, I mean, people have been taking size gross on BFCH since January subpenny um, for no other reason than just hearing BFCH. Um, they are pouring a foundation for a cryptocurrency fil facility, but that's after they received the permits three weeks ago, took delivery of it two weeks before that. It's just, you know, like, it's like ZMRK. When is the moment where people are like, we got it. And that's why I don't currently have to, because I don't want to chase. I don't care to. I don't have to. Toga Limited, also known as Boring Reverse Merger News Play, um, is a bag, T-O-G-L. So we'll pass on that. EFLN, suspended by the SEC bag. Beta Music Group, listen. Beta Music Group has everything you need. They have ride sharing. They have ride sharing. <clears throat> and they also have crypto. They're mainly a crypto payments company. And if there were ever a time to think about trying some Beta Music Group, it might just be about now. On the 30. Some Beta Music Group around 0.05. In the era of crypto and ride sharing, after it did a run to 0.09 and is consolidating like this, nice. Oh, EPAS is a good one, absolutely. Thanks for reminding me. Santo Mining, also known as San P, is one of the original crypto pumps. And today, San P has a uh, eight billion share, eight billion share float. So if that's of interest to you, sand peas for you. For me, I don't have to. It's amazing how I don't have to. Hutton. Timothy Hutton? Bag. CCTL Trip. A very well-known crypto play. Um, and it's in my IMO is cooked. It just doesn't, and it doesn't want to. And even while crypto's running, it's not run, it's not moving. Uh, it's just too fat here. <coughs> you never really know. I mean, if you got trip three on it, it never really goes below it. So if you got trip three CCTL in the age of Bitcoin, um, you know, it, it did okay. Dub, dub two during the Bitcoin craze, but um, for me, I don't have to. Um, Zoom Pass. Oh, yeah. ZPAS is a crypto ticker. Um, it's looking baggy right now, and I, I don't believe I want to, but they are a crypto ticker. They've just done a private placement. Have they just done it? No, they, there's been really no news or anything, and now it's on a stop sign. Uh, share structure is uh, really not great either, so I'm going to pass on that. It's it's very barren land. USTC was the King Don, the boss of crypto plays. We are talking seriously two cents to thirty cents in days. USTC was the best, the bomb, the monster. So good. They have a 500 billion share AS, 500 billion. <laughs> but the float's actually only 33 million. It's still quite thin. Recently, they announced they were switching. Oh, look at this. 
Recently, they announced they were switching to weed, and now that news is gone. And now we are two year, almost two years without news about USTC's crypto operations. USTC, watch it for crypto news. And if I could get some USTC around a penny, around 11, around 12, 13, if they had news, you can call me USTP. USTP. <clears throat> Let's talk about something that's been a bag, but now is just too low to ignore. And if you're looking at this chart, you're saying this chart is trash. But it's a combo of trash and not trash. It's trash because it's Bitcoin until today. And as of May 1st, the float on XALL, XALL, also known as FinTech bag, is 140 million. 140 million. With no news since October. Pink current, they stay current, they file. Verified profile, oh, just the other day, they reached out to OTC Markets and let them know, hey, we're still alive. Oh. No news for a little bit. Exol. If you were looking for a Bitcoin play where you're not last, that is moving up in the absence of selling. That people are going to pretend that they're the smartest out there for finding. Exol just might be the one. I was trying to fill on Exol today and I couldn't. Um, this area, around here, just this area, might be pretty darn nice. Exol on the list. Because I want things that aren't baked. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to with baked. <clears throat> GBTC Bayside. <laughs> Justin has been interviewed by the Hodel podcast in January. God bless. Holy God. Bayside is a trip that went to zero, by the way. So if you think it's just naturally thin, it isn't. Um, it had a, yeah, there it is. It had a reverse split in February. Um, and now there's no shares out there on Bayside. It's always been a Bitcoin uh, dump. Then it went to no bid, and now it's sitting at 0 0.025 with a 300,000 share float. Um, with news coming out, Justin, but not Pink Current. Huh. Interesting. Bayside's going to be more of a special interest play for me. Um... Post reverse split, it's very thin. And post reverse split, even 300K, like even if you took 0.2, a 300K float is very thin. Yeah, let's see if anyone filled any size. Gross. Gross. No. No one's getting any Bayside. I'm going to be putting Bayside on watch tomorrow. I'm going to be watching it. Because that's really tiny. After that reverse split, and Justin, he's on the HODL podcast. Good. Good, good. Swarm. App Swarm. Hmm. 
Swarm is a real uh, chunky one. Made a nice run though, thanks to Jen, she spotted it. And it's come down on almost no volume. Could App Swarm hit you with that crypto flavor soon enough? Yeah, for sure. It's got that promo power too. What's the App Swarm sister stock, Jen? <clears throat> yeah, Bayside, I, I don't want to start slapping it. Like, I would have to seriously see something there. Um, but I'd like to see the action on it, see if anyone's caught on. Swarm and... Gosh. Epaz, a very thin crypto. And you know what? Epaz, bless Epaz. They never gave up on being crypto. They're committed. And as of April 8th, only 45 million on the float EPAS. Nothing. They got blockchain, they got hemp, they got it all. They got whatever you need. Very much too low down here, EPAS. And EPAS made a run that was legendary during the Bitcoin craze. Like, it was crazy back in December. Put right from here to almost half a dollar. And yes, it's been diluted, but my God, not that much. They'll, they'll give you whatever you want, Cavallo. If you like hemp today, EPAS will give you hemp. But EPAS is a known crypto runner. So if EPAS news comes out, I want to look at it because we're doing crypto. For me, Exol, strangely forgotten because it was right in the mix with all those. So I'm definitely going to look at it. Dav C, I don't hope Dav C is done. I don't. But I don't see it as being done. I just see it as a monster in the making that has been brought down with profit taking. I mean, every single step, it's higher lows. But we need to we need to get refocused on the fundamentals. NDYN, God bless. I don't know how to trade this. This has got to calm down. I know. Well, you break my heart when you ask me questions that, that don't even, it's like my, it's like I speak and nothing sinks in. So maybe that one hit home. I see Dav C as the monster in the making. I'm in it. I'm just chilling in it. I'm not going to live by the day to day because I see value there and it is rare to have value out here, yes? If LGBT, LGBT ETF fund can run, Golden State Warriors baggage play while they're in the playoff with popular athlete can run. I am all. So let's get refocused on the fundamentals, please. Okay? Let's not revert to a state of bagginess. And when we are looking tomorrow, crypto's hot. And the thing is, luggage, <laughs> my bad. And the thing that you got to know is this. Crypto traders and OTC traders, it's the same kind of degenerate. So as they get freed up from their bags, they get free to trade other things. And they're going to be coming back. So it's up to you for the next little while. If crypto continues, which I'm not 100% convinced yet, but if it does, it's up to you to stay liquid because there will be fire that will hit you upside the head like that. As these people's trading money gets freed up by Bitcoin improving... It's just going to get hotter and hotter out here. About to be a hot summer. Those are the words of Kim. 
All right, have a good night. Bitcoin list for me, numero uno, Exol, EPAS, Swarm. I have to rewatch my video as well to see the rest. GBTC and others, a thank you.